Hey guys, here we are with 500 effects and we're doing VDBs. Uh, I don't exactly know what it stands for, but I do know the cool things about them. Uh, we use them in 3D, or in Houdini specifically, um, to generate volumes from geometry and from particles and things like that. And the reason you should use VDBs over um, other volume generating tools is that they are super efficient. Why are they efficient? Well, they're efficient because of the way they convert geometry to uh, to volumes or to SDFs. So over here, I'll set up to sh illustrate that for you. So I've just got a torus, I'm scaling about 10, um, and then I've got an ISO offset, which is just normal way of creating SDFs. So cool, I SDF, great, you put your wireframe, you can see the little bounding box, and that's fine. Okay, so what I wanna show you is that the VDBs here are actually a lot more efficient and they are efficient because of the way they convert geometry so what they're going to do is they're going to take the geometry convert it I mean you can see it looks pretty similar they're going to convert it but they're going to throw out all the empty voxels in uh, in your bounding so you can see here is the bounding I've just templated it from uh, the, the ISO offset and you can see the bounding here but VDBs is going to go, oh, there's nothing actually here, so why the hell should I generate anything there? And it's going to drop those voxels, making it super efficient when you think, oh, okay, I've got tree burning, and I'm like, oh, okay, cool, tree is only burning over here, but smoke's going down here, so why should I generate those volumes if they're super empty? And give myself a massive size of disk and massive RAM overhead and whatever, when VDBs work just as well, do exactly, well, similar things, and uh, are super efficient. So running through the settings here, but we've got uh, voxel size, we've got uh, distance and fog VDB, and what this is gonna do is it's gonna create either a density-based uh, volume uh, or a SDF. Uh, here you can call it whatever you want, it doesn't have to be surface, it can just be whatever you wanna name it. Next here an interior band voxels and fill interior. So now fill interior is going to generate a solid SDF. Your see it's still there with density and that's another um, efficiency thing so what it's going to do is it's going to give you well three exterior voxels from the surface so it's going to add extra scale to your bounding box not extra volume to your actual SDF it's the actual bounding box padding if you will on the the SDF or the volume and interior is the interior of this because what it's going to do is it's going to give you three interior voxels before it starts to trash uh, voxels inside as well. Uh, you can convert this by hitting fill interior and then it will fill the interior with voxels and you won't get the interior band anymore. Um, but if you don't need it, then I seriously suggest doing this because it becomes way more efficient. There are a few ways to create VDBs. So I'm just going to show you two. VDB from polygons, which is what we saw earlier. So it's going to create a VDB based on the geometry here and your settings. Uh, you can set your voxel size here. Um, it'll give you a more defined VDB. And VDB from particles. So VDB from particles, what it's going to do is it's actually going to take all these points and treat them as if they're particles and use a radius value um, and generate a VDB around that. This is usually set to 1 and it's going to do that, but I've dropped this radius down so that you can see what's going on here. Um, and here you can create SDFs, density fogs, uh, mask, which is um, you can use in various other ways. It usually plugs into the right hand side of, uh, of VDBs. It's, can, uh, it's like an exclusion or inclusion mask. It basically creates a VDB called mask. So it's gonna give you a radius and a minimum radius of voxels, which sometimes you have to use um, if things start to vanish. Um, you can do with vehicles, and if you have velocity, you can do this, and it'll draw little like pointed streaks for you. Something else just to remember is that a VDB is going to create one surface VDB here, or well, one VDB here, based on whatever you give it. If you want to create more things, what it will do is you can add them in here. So say I have, uh, I don't know, a velocity for whatever reason. Zero, zero. Okay. Then I will just create a surface VDB here, and then I can create add here, pick velocity, and call it 
whatever I want. You can say it's actually a velocity, which will be a vector. And then you can see it can be surface and file, and it'll create those for you. That's a handy way of creating source volumes for pyro and uh, various other emission simulations like the pyro, flip, or whatever. Um, so here we've got a sealed pig, and we'll create a VDB out of it. Nice. Looks like it, you would expect. And here we've got a hollow peg, which is an open geometry. And we create a VDB out of it, and all of a sudden, everything has dropped. And we're like, oh my gosh, what's this going to do? How are we going to do this? I thought it would just create a little bits here, and you can change your voxel size as much as you want, and nothing shows up, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is never going to work. Don't panic. What you can do is you add a VDB v uh, reshape here, and it will just dilate your VDBs here and that will fill out your VDBs a bit better. And you can see here, it's going to give you a nice um, VDB based on the surface density here, and it'll offset by whatever value you put here.